<laughs> hard as hell. Uh, preparing to okay, this is being live streamed. Got it. Okay, I just got a warning. <laughs> okay, cool. This could be live right now. We have no idea, actually. It says live on YouTube. Maybe I should go okay. and watch my I own channels. Yeah, I'm on your channel. Let's see if... Uh... Um, well, I can't I like see... Have... Uh... I would love to have like a, a comment field or something so we can see that, <laughs> that people are actually here or not here. I don't know. Because I... Oh, uh, yeah, there is a... Okay, I can see us in Zoom. Right oh, Oh, and I have to turn off the oh, sound. Yeah, I can. And there are people. <laughs> okay, amazing. But how do we see the chat? How okay, do it, is see it? it is. Uh, this is top so chat. fun. Yeah, I okay, can see. Hello. See. Someone's saying hello. You're live here. <laughs> okay, okay, amazing. Hi, guys. Uh, here it is, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So people, okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, Callan. Uh, Natalie says, hi, Callan. Apparently, we are live. Okay, amazing. Here we have we have Leben, Marianne. Oh my God. Okay, this works. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I can just tell you guys that like we have been trying this for three, four hours now, I think, um, without success. This is a very much uh, what we call it uh, nerd situation in Sweden, like a emergency planning, basically. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, we, yeah. we, we met two hours before the stream to get it set up. And uh, we're now over an hour after uh, it was supposed yeah. to go live. Almost two hours, actually. So, we're yeah, we're doing this through Zoom. Uh, very weird setup. You can see in under my name, it says Christine Kerr, my girlfriend. Uh, and that's because we're using her account because mine wasn't allowed <laughs> uh, for some reason. We still don't have what we want. We wanted to have the notifications. We wanted to have... Uh, like a text above us that explained the, what the uh, the talk is going to be about and stuff, but nothing we really has gone Hi, Susan. Plan. Hi to everyone who's here. Let's see who are, are here. Dagmar and Julianne. We have Rude, Lars Lander, Nord, Warren, Leah. Yeah, a lot of people. Okay. Very good. Whew. Oh, this was... Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this was really Beautiful tough, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if we are a bit tired during this live stream this is be it's because we've been trying to figure this out now for yeah three hours so our heads is not exactly with us or i can only speak for myself but that's the situation yeah uh, keep <laughs> i finally here oh no when did it start well it started right now so everything's now fine. You... you're not, you're not no one's too late here because we started no, exactly one and a half hours up, so. but it will be amazing if people can just um uh, say if we can like hear and see us fine like if the audio quality is good as well because we've never done it through zoom so we would just good to know if it's actually living up to standards so to speak yes that would be wonderful uh and i can see that we're on a bit of a lag here um yeah so we're probably exactly. reading the things a bit differently from when you guys are talking and everything but uh, all is well Lovely. now irma says hi from stockholm hi from madrid all okay all is good <laughs> Okay, uh, and uh, I did. I did. I think I wanted to start with this. I just wanted yeah. to let everyone know uh, that our thoughts are with the people of Ukraine. Um, I did actually want to mention that our our books, these books that I've been painting on, are actually from the Ukraine, from a family firm in Kiev. And uh, so, yeah, our uh, our thoughts are with the people of Ukraine, and um, our support goes to them uh, of this. Of this this uh, horrible um, situation there. Uh, so we're going to talk, of course, about our art and our situation. But um, we are very very well aware of what's happening there. Um, yeah. And of course, if there's anything anyone wants to say in the chat, you can. And yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good opening, so people understand that we know what's going on, and we, uh, of course, are with the people, but we just want to clarify it so it's out there at least. Uh, because we don't want to yeah. sit here and have a really happy and good time and then uh, feel very, um, yeah, we feel a bit ignorant to not acknowledge it at least. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, I can see a Ukrainian flag here. And um, yeah, I've been following the situation for a very long time, and suddenly it happened. And suddenly, uh, the most awful thing in, uh, happened in a very long time in Europe. Um, it's a situation where it's very difficult to find the right words, but yeah, I think there's very difficult to say anything else that yeah 
and Irma says I'm absolutely praying for them and um, yeah um, we might um, see if there's anything we can do for the people that we know there at some point but uh, for now that's the only thing we can really do is to no, let them know if there's anyone here in the chat from Ukraine that uh, we really think of you now as a part of the European community. And yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Should we jump into the to the subject of or the theme of the live stream, so to speak? Yeah, um, and we can do and... that. As a, I mean, that that's as I as I said already. Um, these are made from people actually living in Kiev, from the family there. And so we will be talking about art. Uh, we will be talking about how to live off your art. And they've managed to do it um, themselves from these wonderful, wonderful wooden books. And uh, yeah, so we'll talk about how we are doing that. Yeah. Um, and I think the funny thing about this conversation is that we also have very different approaches to what art is, I guess. Um, yes. We have everything from music to filmmaking to um, what did uh, what Liana posted a bit a few days ago? Fire, I don't know what to call it. Uh, <laughs> fire artist. Fire breathing. Fire breathing. Yeah. Fire breathing. Yeah. Uh, so art can be so many, so many different things. I think. And yeah, uh, we are in a very fortunate position that we actually can live of our art through thanks to many different things, of course. But it's not like i had this dream when i was way way younger but i had no idea how to actually realize it i didn't know where to start basically i knew that i wanted to my from the beginning i wanted to live of music actually i wanted to be a, mm. a rock star uh stand <laughs> on stage um i i am on a stage i guess at like if you can call it youtube a stage um but that was my very beginning and i think it could be interesting to hear your stories about where you like when was the tipping point for you because you probably were an mm. artist for quite a long time before you actually uh, ran a profit on it so to speak yeah and I, I mean i like the that that thought that you had there i mean art can be so many different things so just to kind of clarify that that we don't mean necessarily it doesn't have to be painting or an art in that sense just something you're passionate about then you can develop and i mean something uh, yeah so it can be I mean, you had sound design can be an yeah. art, everything can be an art form. I mean, if you what, love working um, in your local grocery shop, I am sure you can make that into an art. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so just your passion in a way. And um, yeah, so I, <laughs> exactly. So I actually did, uh, for instance, fire breathing and juggling when I was a kid, because my mother, uh, my father is an artist and my mother was a children's entertainer. Mm, um, okay. So I kind of grew up in that kind of a family. And uh, love to develop that. Um, and I, I actually made little worlds of paper clay and so on and, um, and clay. And that's kind of how I started to make my little worlds. So that was my art. Okay. So at what age did you actually start to see that? Like, okay, this is a possibility I can actually... Or let's say it like this. When was your very first sale or assignment or anything that actually brought in money from something you created yeah i made candles i remember okay. that i actually i actually completely different i think i must have been like 13 or something and i made uh, candles like in sand and then um, i made my own candles and then i went around the neighborhood and sold them from door to door okay entrepreneur so i think that was yeah so that was kind of the first uh, first way into that and in a way that's kept going because i um, make things to sell a lot of artists don't mm -hmm. so i mean i suppose that was the first thing that i i did but uh, to make something but that didn't come uh, so actually to live off of it came way later okay. much much later and when was the tipping point for that or let's say put it like this when was the realization for you that like oh this can actually be a way of living of yeah so i think my story and i you can jump in there too i mean i i studied at university because i as many others uh, had didn't think that i could it just seemed absurd i loved sitting in my own little room and make my little worlds and uh, and so on and then i studied and while i studied i started painting and then painting just kind of, that was, that was what I did. That was, I tried to just write everything as fast as I could and then 
I painted or didn't write anything. And then I, yeah, so, so it kind of just took over my life, basically. Yeah, I totally get that. And it's so funny when you can find that like little thing or little seed in your life that just, for me at least, occupies my entire brain when I got uh, started thinking about it. It could be sound yes. design, it can be videos, it could be whatever. And it's impossible to stop. And I'm reading this book at the moment uh, about entrepreneurship. And the, it's like, it says like a warning label in the beginning, like if you decide to go down this path, start your own company, something creative, this is my warning. This is your, like, if you're not ready to go all in, this is where you should stop because this is going yeah. to consume you. Uh, it's going to consume your, uh, like, early mornings and sleeps, and it's going to in interrupt your relationship in many ways. It's going to, yeah, interfere with a lot because Christine and me talk about, about this sometimes as well, that, yeah, I, I can't stop working. I, I think it's like, and I don't see it as work particularly because I really enjoy it. Um, but it's really hard for me to switch off my brain when I found something I really love and I can also actually earn money on it and pay my bills, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is, that is wonderful. I, I think that's a very good point that if you want to live off your art, make sure that that's actually something you do want to do because it's, um, it's exactly like that. I mean, it, it does take over everything and you have to, it has yeah. to be, it's a passion. I think a lot of people, um, be careful. You don't have to have a passion. And if you, if you really like uh, being done at four o'clock and then you don't have to think about your job anymore, that's, that's fine. That's not how this is. Um, you're never really done. Um, I'm just seeing some people here uh, are joining you. Uh, Katietius is here from the Netherlands. Greetings to you. Um, and yeah, so so just make really, really sure that you 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 have to do it. I think that's it. I, I said that in a video that it's just something I had to do. Yeah. And I would like to know, so tell tell us a bit about that from your perspective, though, because you had different arts and then eventually you came here, but it seems to be kind of a more a convergence. Yeah, uh, I don't know exactly where to start, but it started with music, I would say. That was my first like creative outlet. And I had no idea, like, particularly how to earn money on it, but I knew that that's what I wanted to spend my time on, or at least be creative in some sense. Um, but I didn't know when I went to uh, Grundskolan, as is in, say in Sweden, like from age, uh, what is it, seven to age 16 or something. Mm -hmm. um, I had this idea of like, okay, I want to do this, but I, I don't know where to go. And then I went to... The next stage of school, which is 16 to 19, basically. Um, and it's a gymnasium, I just chose, yeah. yeah, exactly, gymnasium. And I chose the music uh, category of schools. Um, mm -hmm. I was the only one in my class that did that, actually. Oh, and everyone right. else wanted, uh, went off and studied science and math and stuff I really didn't like at all. <laughs> to uh, get a real job. It, yeah, exactly. And then <laughs> after that, I started to think about, like, okay, now I've done this, but what now? And I didn't really know. So I took normal jobs for maybe two years. I was a teacher. I worked as mm. a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, manager at McDonald's for like one and a half years. Um, ah, sure. Yeah. I was a uh, training coach. I tried a lot of things because I, I knew I, what I wanted, but I had no like idea how to get there. And that was a tricky yeah. part for me. Um, and I also went for when I went to the university for three years, studied sound design and music, I thought, okay, this, this is the thing. Okay, I can have a salary. I can be acquired by a company. And, um, but I did that for half a year and I thought it was so cool. I got to do sound design <laughs> for, uh, you know, the Battlefields uh, video games by Electronic Arts, like really, really mm -hmm. big productions. But at the end of the day, I was like, okay, I'm sitting in a bunker, meeting no one, just watching a computer screen. I do mm. a lot of watching my computer screens when I'm editing and stuff, but I only did that when I did the sound design. Now I can- And it wasn't your outside, project, was it? Exactly. Not my choice. Uh, it was amazingly cool explosion mm. war <laughs> games and everything, uh, which was really cool, but um, it was not my project. So- yeah. Yeah, that was a tricky thing. I just, my guidance would be probably like, if you don't know what direction it is, you want to go. Like I just followed 
what felt good, not exactly what would earn me money. I went through two different music school and that took me six years and I've learned so oh, yeah. much from that. Uh, and it's like, thanks to that, I have the, uh, the background in editing. And that really helped me with my, uh, my video on YouTube career. And I started making videos even when I was, uh, I was say 14, 15, 16, you know, like mm. skateboard videos with my GoPros and stuff like that. Uh, oh, I that did sounds like Lena. Yeah, <laughs> it's very kind much of the same thing. kind of the the, yeah. hob, the 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 hobby is kind of just I mean, that's the same for me too, where, but the hobby grows into something more eventually. Yeah, and that's what I call, um, what do you call it? A, uh, a baby sister project. We call it in, in Sweden, Lilla Sister Project. Uh, so um, kind of on the side that then grows. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have to see it as like uh, your first, uh, your main thing. You don't need to you know, mm -hmm. quit your nine to five job and like, I'm going to yeah. be a painter. You can just spend, you know, 30 minutes a day to learn how to paint. And that yeah, I can recommend that because that's exactly what I kept doing. <laughs> so I, I can see some questions here as well from people. What would be the first step uh, uh, from an artist who just uh, about to finish art school and I would like to take art class uh, and so on. And I mean, I did that. I kept quitting mm -hmm. my university studies to live off of my art and it kept yeah. not working because I mean, how? Um, so yeah, no, don't recommend that. I can talk from experience because that's exactly what I did. Um, yeah. Same thing for uh, me with the, say, <laughs> it's not an art thing, but it's a life decision thing. Like when I moved to the cabin, I first tried it for like, how long did I do that? For a year almost? Like uh, I went here every weekend from Stockholm. So mm. that's six hours driving from Stockholm, uh, spent a week in here and six hours down again. I just tried it and tried it and tried it. So that baby sister product of mine of living in the cabin actually yeah. became like, okay, this could be more than a baby sister product. It could actually take, uh, take over, so to speak. Yeah. So um, you did it. You didn't do it the way I did. I did it. Uh... I tried again and again and I failed and failed and failed until eventually it, it worked. But I yeah. think I would recommend the, the, the way of slowly but surely easing into it. So someone said here, I would like to take art drawing class, and, but I don't think I would get to the same level as you. Uh, but of course, if you really love it, of course you would. Uh, you just you progress based upon where you are and then you get a little bit further and yeah. you always just use yourself as a reference point. That's how I did it with painting. And at least at the only place I was uh, consistent was with painting. Everything else I kept quitting and I started, but with painting, I was consistent and I always kept progressing um, compared to where I was. I didn't look at other people mm. and try to compare, but always just a little bit further from the point where I was at. And I really recommend that. And I think that's also a great point because how do I should put this? Um, of course you can start like, okay. I think the most important thing is not to quit actually, if they have to yes. be honest, like you're going to get a lot of bumps on the road and they're going to co come after you and come after you. And if I get like put down every time I get a bad comment or I don't feel so uh, secure about uh, um, now something is disconnecting from my computer. Hang oh, on. It's my camera. Yeah, you disappeared. <laughs> yep. Hang on. My battery might be low after uh, we've been live oh, for no. three hours. Hang on. Our technical <laughs> problems are not, are not finished yet. I'm hoping that my, uh, my, my phone here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to look through right? your yeah, I can hear you. Um, and uh, yes, I would like to take an art drawing class, but I don't think I would ever get to the same level. Uh, well, just uh, stick to it. And it's just uh, find find your way of painting and drawing. And um, and uh, you will. You'll get much, much better, I'm sure. And first step, as someone who wants to, uh, to live off their art, well, figure out what you want to create and what you want to, I mean, if you want to sell or if you want to live off of stipends and do exhibitions, those are very different things. Um, and if you have something to sell, um, then we're going to talk a little bit more about that because the, the way I did that was by branching out. There we have Kalle again. Yeah, <laughs> battery. <So. laughs> they last for two and a half hours live streaming, but that's it. And we've been trying it for three oh, yeah. hours now, so it makes that's sense. That's true. I hope you said candles keep going. Uh, oh, yeah. It's quite hmm? cute, true what you said about that. If you start focusing on the money right away, that's going to be the wrong angle to go into it. Um, you have to focus on what makes you happy about the projects and the art. Because if you're focusing about the money, that's the wrong angle into it. 
Um, of course, you should ha- could have the goal of one day earning money. But if that's the main thing, then, then you're going to have a drive that is, I don't know if that's going to be so successful. It might work for some people, but not for me, at least. Yeah, I think then you're actually an entrepreneur. Then you're then it's different. Then you're not living off your art. Then you're trying. I mean, some people, a lot of people start there. They want to live off of something and then they look for something they can sell, for instance, or something. And that's legitimate and you can do that, but that's different than living off of your passion. And then yeah. for that, you do have to find the passion first. Um, I can see that. Sorry, I just want to jump mm, in with yeah. Su- uh, Susanna has a question. That is, what's the name of the entrepreneur book? And I brought it up oh, yeah. here. Uh, it's 12 Months to 1 Million by Ryan, Dian- <laughs> Ryan Daniel Moran. Um, it's a really interesting book that's more focused on Mm, how to put this like developing a product it could that could be paintings and everything but it's more like products and then learn how to sell them online basically um, that is something we can talk about but that is very interesting too yes yeah, i mean is. that that was that was the way where i finally could be able to live off of it and i mean that's yeah. uh, that's a that's a topic in and of itself um it is I just got uh, one. So, uh, um, yeah. Can I say one thing before we continue as well? Oh, of course. Yeah, I think it's, we talked about this a bit before the live stream, three hours ago, something like that. Um, that I think that the, when people want to share their art or, yeah, oh, yeah, talk about it, I think the biggest mistake that me included sometimes, the biggest mistake we do is not to talk about it enough. That we like have this idea, oh, I can't share this. It's like, <laughs> oh, I can't talk about it too much. It's too spammy. I, and I realized that um, the same thing as COVID is if it's a Patreon page, if it's an ebook or a painting or a candle, if you're not talking about it, people have no idea that yeah. you're do- doing that. And like you can paint all day long, but if you're not sharing a picture behind it or of it, it's not going to sell. Uh, and you also have yeah. to almost spam it out because if you just share say one story maybe one twentieth of your audience is going to see that perhaps maybe and maybe they're busy at the moment at when they're seeing it so you need to post it again uh, that's what i'm going to spam out my ebook to people so they will actually be able to see it um, before the pre-order is up so the third thing we're going to do i'm just going to share our both our oh right <laughs> our <laughs> absolutely our- Link. Yeah, so share that with the website, absolutely. See if and I mean, uh, talk to everyone and show everyone around you what you're doing so that you get some response from the outside world. That's how I came yeah. up with the, um, the cups and the glasses that I paint. And that's the reason why I could start to live off of it because that's what people actually wanted to buy. And I would never have gotten to that idea if I didn't press my things on every single person I met. And of course, they all went crazy by it. But it, eventually you get some feedback. You need feedback. Yeah, you really do. I'm just filling in here. So we yeah, have a and I am a skilled woodworker, but I can cannot make a living with it. Yeah, uh, yes, I can work in construction, but I do not like that. Oh, I get that. I like carving wood. Oh, that's wonderful. That could be a wonderful shop, for instance. That could be a wonderful thing to live off of. So, uh, to make beautiful wood carved things and then get that out in the world, just yeah, keep. If it's really the passion, as Carla said, keep on it don't uh, quit your job and try it but just yeah keep 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 on it and keep getting better figure out what people like then create a wonderful web page that's very important i made lots and yeah. lots of web pages and it's spent hours and hours getting them off of google <laughs> yeah that's a big thing as well like i usually say that like making youtube videos for instance half the thing of making youtube videos or half the work is actually creating the videos the other half is getting people to see the YouTube video. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of work as well that people don't think about because people just assume that like, yeah, you created a YouTube video. Of course, it's going to reach everyone, but no, not a chance. <laughs> um, so yeah, I saw Dominika, by the way, that you bought my book. So thank you so yes, much. Yes, very good. It came in, uh, came in as order. So if you are curious about um, Joachim's paintings or candles or his art in general, you find the link under the video now that I've added. Very good. Um, and for my ebook and, as well. And we so. are having another launch in two weeks. So I can mention that. Okay, and all of the cool. things behind me, that's going to be on our web page very soon because now everything is almost sold out. <laughs> but, <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, but is it like a, um, when you do these launches, is it the, 
of course you have a limited amount that it goes out but do you yeah do you focus what is how to put this like different parts of the year do you focus extra much on the diaries or is it more on candles some seasons or do you have the same so offer I, every time yes i did it a bit like that so i focused on candles or I, but now actually um what we are going to do and what i'm going to do this time is to make a little bit less of each thing but absolutely everything so now we have okay. lanterns we have every absolutely everything so the shop will be filled with everything every time and that's in two uh, weeks and that's in two weeks uh yeah so then i have to ask you what is your then two weeks that's it's in the middle of the ne- week next week or is it a specific date <laughs> yeah, i don't know no we can't be that specific we still need to get lena's com- <laughs> lena's computer back <laughs> and, oh, okay uh, that's kind of the deal <laughs> Uh, so we're not entirely sure when it's going to be. We, we think it's going to be about in two weeks um, okay, time. Cool. And I'm um, yeah. So we got the new new lanterns. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm painting like crazy on everything at once. Um, yeah. Trying to get it finished. Uh, and someone said here, um, how? Imp- oh, I just I I just I keep reading the things at the same time. <laughs> uh, and how important is discipline and that actually goes very well into this uh, i was never very disciplined until the shop started going live and i noticed okay ah okay that's now this so now i i wake up early and i paint for eight to ten hours a day i have very strict uh, regimens um because i mean i <laughs> A lot of artists, as I said, they live off of stipends from the state or from um, selling one artwork a year or something. But if you live off of a shop, you actually have an hourly wage and you kind of have to produce even though it's But is it a a stressful thing having that kind of, how to put it, like if you in theory would produce more, like more paintings, more candles, more everything, you would earn more as well. So is that kind of a stress or have you put the limitation that this is the cap? If that makes I, sense. Uh, well, I have a little bit of a cap. Uh, Lena kind of tells me that uh, the, there are limits to how many things she's going to photograph and put in our store. And we don't <laughs> want to fill it up either. Um, yeah, that makes sense. But I never completely finished when we are at the launch. So it's, it's more... <laughs> yeah, so it's... Um, it's... Um, it's yeah, it's it, 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 a lot of the discipline is just basically to know when to stop. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of that, a, that's really yeah. tricky. Yeah, it is. So, so, it's, so that's probably the way with your videos and and so on too. That you just and living off of what what your passion is, you just have to know. Okay, now, for instance, now after six o'clock, I am done, uh, okay. and that's how we done it. Now I make dinner and then it's finished. Then I'm done for oh, the day. Oh, that's. Okay. And okay. Interesting. I couldn't do that. I think because I have this, like I get, especially when I listen to, or read this many like entrepreneur books, um, I can't stop thinking. And if I like, it's so hard to stop that. If, especially yeah. when I'm in the middle of a launch right now, it's like, Oh, but if I do that, then I can do like a campaign on, on Instagram that that will maybe reach more people. And then I was like, Oh, it's 10 o'clock. I, I need to go to sleep. And then I go to bed and then like, but if I do that, <laughs> and then I can do this and then my brain just keeps going. So in theory, I would love to have a, like a off switch at six o'clock or yeah. 11 o'clock or something, but I don't know how I could physically move out and leave the computer and the phone. Absolutely. But my brain would still keep on going. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think that's the different, different arts have different, um, uh, challenges. So, uh, when I'm done, I am done because it's uh, I, it's an intuitive process. So I don't have to plan anything. Okay. Um, for me, more the problem is that, of course, I see if just if I painted one few hours now, I have two or three more cups, and I can just and you just you really just want to continue or something like that. And someone says here, I like that. Um, don't paint more, but make it more expensive. That is going to That's happen. That's a very true. Um, yeah. That is, I, I, I did notice that. I had some uh, times when I thought, okay, maybe I can make 40 or 50 or 60. And if I can <laughs> even faster, I can. And um, no, so I've decided not to ever sacrifice quality. That's a good idea. So that's kind of one of the main breaks. <laughs> but do you have like, how to put this then? Um, because you're funny enough, even though you're painting the same amount of paintings, Mm-hmm. Your work can still, 
I, this is tricky part because <laughs> we as entrepreneurs don't have like salary negotiations with our boss. We need to do that, that with true. ourselves. Um, people that are hired by someone do that usually in the spring or something, at least in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And then they get, if they're lucky, a bit of a salary bump. But if we are ourselves, I can't, or I could technically take a meeting with myself, but um, I just mean that we need to sit down and also think about, like you said, I can't create more videos, for instance, a year, but can mm -hmm. I make them more exclusive or can I put them behind a, behind a paywall or can I get them sponsored? Try to think yeah. of the same content, but move, do more of them. I have this plan. Yeah. Um, or I'm going to make that a reality this spring that I'm starting a second channel actually uh, on YouTube that is going to be mm. all of my live streams, the separate clips, this basically Calif Lodin clips. So all of those like highlights from videos that could be like yeah. a segmented talk or it could be like a live stream like this one. Um, and then put that in a clips channel to get more, more content of what I'm already doing. And if Yes, but not flooding your channel. Exactly. And if they want to see the whole video or the whole live stream, they can go to the main channel to that just is get wonderful. distribution. That's a good idea. And um, people ask, ask things like that. How different, difficult was it to price your art and so on? Um, uh, and that's kind yeah. of a... So, I mean, so, so, so to... I mean, for you, of course, it's going to be... Because, you, <laughs> yeah, you have to branch out. You know, it's different. For me, it's about what, what is the price of what I do. And for you, it's... Yeah. Well, it's a very challenging uh, thing. I mean, it's yeah. So you have to have different projects. Up from now, you have your ebook. Yeah. Um, and with the YouTube channel, of course, I I, I get that because you only, you don't want to flood your channel. No, because they, there is people sign up for a specific thing. I can even yeah. see now when I'm started to live stream a bit more, which I really really love when it works. Uh, I can <laughs> see that a lot of people are dropping off and unfollowing because that's not what they signed up for. Yeah, and that's yeah. totally fine because I'm going to do a lot of live streams. And if they don't want that, that's totally fine. But people and branches or companies are changing and evolving. And I want to add the live streaming part as a bonus thing so I can connect with my audience. Because when we're doing these videos, that's a one-way street. I'm just putting up a video. And of course, I cannot answer as much comments as I can. But it's still a one-way communication. It's not that direct. A live yeah. stream is actually you and I, in this instance, talking to our audience directly. And that's a major difference. And I really, really love that. Yeah, me too. And I can see here, I'm just, uh, I'm wearing every day Joachim's wooden talisman. Oh, Susan. that's nice. That is wonderful. I am so happy to hear that people, yeah. That it's so funny. Fun. Yeah, I'm just going to say, it's so fun <laughs> yeah, because there's so... Fun. so it's so many people that text me and says like, oh, it's so wonderful <laughs> that you support you or Kim in his work. It's so lovely. I was like, it, it, yes, Carla, that would like be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint. I actually bought this from a, a festival here in Sweden a couple of years ago, but it's very close to what you do. Uh, but this is not paper. This true? is uh, this is uh, actual bur. What do you call it? Bur birch. Birch. Yeah, but birch. What is the word for the actual? Birch. I wouldn't slice. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? I mean, that's the, yeah, so that's the. We call it Naver in Sweden. Yeah, ex I think yeah. so. So that's what we're, that's what I'm painting on. No, no, no. In other words, this is purely metal. Oh. This one here. Oh, okay. But oh, in okay. It, in the whole thing, it's it's close to the camera, maybe, but in the whole Let's thing. Let's get this. Never. Ah, I see. It's a bark. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dominique says, yes, I wear it as well. That's so cool. Oh, Isn't that amazing that is to have like people actually incredible. wearing your stuff? It's one thing it to is, have paintings on wonderful. the wall. That's amazingly cool. But I think it's even cool to imagine that they, you're going to meet people out in the world and they are wearing the stuff you've made. I thought, I mean, I, th I, think, I think I've sold like 600 different items this, this year. Oh, wow. Um, really? Alone. <laughs> And to think about that, there are hundreds of things in people's living room and on their walls and on their bodies, and it's it's yeah. it's incredible. It's wonderful. I, I love that. Um, that's uh, that's one of the reasons I never want to just. I'm gonna have make some big paintings, but I never want to stop making things that uh, everyone can buy because it just it's just, it's so wonderful. I think about that a lot with uh, tattoo tat tattoo artists. Um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. but they're they're literally making art on people's bodies that is going to be there 
forever. Yeah. Um, that was, I just can't imagine that kind of stress level if, if you screw something oh, I up. Oh, it would be awful. I mean, I'm so happy that, that I, can, I can reverse the things that I do. No, no, I would not. I don't think I would trans, trans, transfer over to becoming a tattoo artist. That must be the most nerve wracking thing in the world. But we were oh, talking God. a bit a bit before about like you said that you, we can talk a lot about how to live from your art, but you said that you had a lot of mistakes that you would like to share as well, like common things that is. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I have that too, of course. Uh, but you had, it sounded like you almost had a list of people or list of things. Oh, I, I, I have an enormous amount of things. Uh, I guess the way I did it, I, uh, I studied and then I painted a lot and then I wanted to and then I kind of, I, okay, I was really happy and really into painting. And I thought, okay, this is going to work. And then I quit my studies and moved into the forest. And uh, and, and the things that I did, I mean, I, I mean, you get these ideas and you think, oh, this look, looks wonderful. And people are going to buy this as long as they just see it. Yeah. And so I would kind of just create a web page. Um, but thinking, for instance, one of the mistakes was just... Um, they just need to see the things, the page, the page doesn't need to be any good. So just fill the page with as many things as you possibly can. And someone's gonna see it and um, no, that, that for some reason that didn't work. Um, yeah. It really needs, it needs to be, people need to have the feeling that they, first of all, they can trust the page and they can, yeah. uh, they can, they can trust it. People need to get there. Um, and I had no plan. I mean, I had, I wanted to sell big paintings. That was the only thing I did, for instance, mm -hmm. at another time. Um, but I mean, and, and then a few people bought paintings and then I thought, oh, this is good. This is working. So, okay, I quit my studies again. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. of course realized that, oh, those were the only, they, they now have paintings. So they're not going to buy anything else. And oh yeah, that was returning it. Returning customers. Yeah, that's true. Returning customers. So that's the wonderful thing with having lots of different things because now we have returning yeah. customers buying different things. So you can buy a cup and then you can buy a painting and then you can get a talisman. And that's true. And a big painting. I mean, then that's what they're bought. And maybe in 10 years they'll come back. Yeah. Um, and a, yeah, a lot of different different problems. I um I think some people can uh, work a normal job and uh, do their art at the same time. For me, that didn't really work. If I, I worked quite a lot in kindergartens, uh, childcare, but afterwards I was so finished, I was so tired, I couldn't paint. Yeah. Um, and I think you almost need to reserve time for that. You know, like if you're gonna be, go for something like painting or YouTube videos or whatever it may be, I think you need to be dedicated enough to actually put up a time uh, say if you're having a full-time living and like, okay, I want to leave this one day, then you need to take the decision. If I'm quitting at six o'clock every evening, for instance, um, at my store or wherever I'm working, you need to say like, okay, I'm go home. I make dinner, but from eight to eight 30, I'm dedicated mm. to these um, YouTube edits or yeah, whatever it may be, learn how to sketch. Because if you're not making it into habit that is consistent, it's mm -hmm. going to fall off. Um, and that's the thing when it comes to stuff you love to do. I love making videos and I love writing this, this ebook and everything, but sometimes you also hate it and it can be overwhelming and then you need a break. But if you're going to be successful, at, I think you need to actually put your ass on the stool and then just get to work. I think that's the hardest part. And a lot of people say that, that write books as well. The hardest part is not actually writing the book it's actually sitting down and starting writing the book because it's such a big thing to overcome uh, i think it could be smart to also instead of like i'm gonna write a book to divide it into like oh tonight i'm gonna write one page and this mm -hmm. one um one very famous author in sweden that has this uh, trick maybe everyone else does it as well i don't know but he talks a lot about it that is that he has this deal of himself that he can't the last he has to do what is it two or four pages a day at least and the rule is when you reach the end of the page no matter where you are in the story you have to stop so even if it's a mid in the middle of the sentence he's stopping there because it's so much easier to start from an unfinished sentence compared to starting mm. a completely new chapter because like okay yeah 
what's how should we start this chapter um but his idea is to actually start it in the middle or end it in the middle yeah. because it's easier to pick up on and i think that's quite clever that is very that is very much the same with painting uh the way if people that's actually a tip i can give for people if you don't know how to start just get some colors and just it doesn't really matter just it's yeah. so much that is exactly it it's so much easier to and then suddenly you'll see a mountain or you see oh there is something there and then you can continue yeah uh, so absolutely and but it's uh, one interesting thing that i uh, thought about when you were talking um is exactly so the discipline part if you have to sit down for instance i think it depends on why you are doing what you're doing so someone asked me here uh, what were you studying but like, but that you kept quitting. Well, I studied political science, oh, uh, but my safe, <laughs> but my safe space, uh, the way, for instance, if I had a hard day, if I was scared, if I was anxious, I would paint. So mm, it was my, okay. it, it was, it was my, my escape from the, from the world. And I mean, it still kind of is, it's just, it's my job as well now. Uh, and since it was my escape, it was, different i think for me it didn't really need any discipline um the discipline is uh when you're actually trying to make something to sell then it's a mm -hmm. different kind of discipline that you have to have because it needs to be actually be something that you can give and you have to pick out the hairs and you have to be kind of more careful but since i think it depends on why you're doing what you're doing and for me i've discovered that only later it's um my art was my escape i don't know what your how it was for you but for instance my my anxiety or if i was depressed or something i would paint and i would feel better hmm i don't know what my escape was actually but i know mm. that i like it used to be playing computer games like that was my escape from world in city life so to speak mm. uh, that was way easier because i didn't have i had yeah. video making and everything but i didn't have it as a career and i didn't know how to go into it uh, but i saw one comment from uh, laura um, I have the same problem. Just to, <laughs> so yeah, Krasi is here as well. Perfect. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I have the same problem. Exactly. I work uh, part time. I devoted mm. so much time on my day to do things I don't like. And at the end of the day, it's no time. Exactly. There's that's. I think that's almost everyone can feel that or recognize that feeling of like, yeah, I study so much or I work so much and yeah. I don't have time or energy to do my art, but. This may sound hard, but then you have to actually put away time to do that because you're if you're studying full time and also maybe working part time. How to put this before, without sounding like a complete asshole? But um, <laughs> I just want to say that like you have to dedicate a few, maybe half an hour, or go up a bit early in the morning, or do something that would make it almost force you into it, like you're never going to succeed in something if you're just pushing it away or um, continue working constantly because then you're going to be trapped in that loop, basically. And I think that's what a lot of people said to me. Like, yeah, the most, the worst thing that ever happened to me was that I got a comfortable job with a comfortable salary. Mm. Because I think that's so a good hard. segue, though. Yeah, sorry. That's, I just, that's a good segue into combining the two different themes. I mean, the theme of our last live stream, that's kind of where Simple Living comes in, too. Absolutely. Because, for instance, you started your YouTube in your cabin where there was really nothing much to do. And I'm, I started no. really painting for my store in a little cabin up in the woods, too. Uh, so I think something you could say is that, um, okay, maybe you don't have the discipline. Maybe you don't have the hours after work. Well, could you live off of 50% less? Could you exactly. not meet your friends that much if it's too difficult? Could you move out of the city? Yeah. Um, so are there ways to just simplify and get rid of lots of things in your life? Um, yeah. And that might be, for those of us who are not very disciplined, um, it's often a good way. So to combine the simple living might be that the way to free you. Yeah, it can also be like, you don't need to move out to cabin. It could also be minimizing your expenses, even in an yeah. apartment in the city. Uh, I, that's what I, my journey started, actually. I was living still in, in an apartment, but I started to discover minimalism. Like, when I did that, I was like, okay, all my stuff have to go. And I just, you know, went everything to the, the flea markets and secondhand mm -hmm. shops. I was like, here, <laughs> take it all. I don't want it anymore. Um, and I didn't work that much. I didn't have a full-time job because I wanted to do other stuff with my time. So I, my, yeah. especially here in the cabin, 
the first half year I lived here, um, I didn't do any videos. I didn't do any podcasts, anything, because it was so bloody cold. Uh, so oh. my main <laughs> occupation here from the half, the first half year was basically keeping warm. I didn't have, you know, the stove back here. I didn't have the air heating system we have now. It's like, it was just cold. Um, so the only thing I did was reading books and going for walks with the, the dogs. But yeah, that, it's totally right. I think if you don't have time, can you like start to work less? Could that be a thing? Um, mm. It's always different from everyone's situation, of course. And it's really hard to just answer everyone in a main, uh, main forum like this. Um, but I think it's hard to do that kind of, I think a lot of people are in that trap of being too comfortable. Uh, and I know it's like, it's, but I get my salary and yeah. And I mm. like, and I have the job. Should I really give it up? What's going to happen next? But if you never try it, you have no idea how it's going to go because I, I'm doing this video right now that is coming out on, on Sunday, that is going to be a huge inspiration in this topic. Um, it's about basically leaving that comfort zone and understanding like, okay, what is the worst thing that could happen if I tried? And for me, mm. it was like, okay, I moved to the cabin. I'm not going to earn any money at all, basically. Just a few hundred dollars a month on event gigs and uh, co uh, coaching people and running and stuff. But the worst thing that could happen is that I moved to the cabin and realized, okay, I can't make this work. I'm going bankrupt or I don't like to be alone or whatever it may be. Um, but the worst thing that would happen is like, okay, I gave up on the cabin thing. That wasn't my, my thing maybe. And then I move back to the city and get a normal job again. And mm -hmm. the worst, like, that's not too bad either because then I've at least tried it. Yeah. And I'm only back where I actually started. So I haven't gone back in education or I've actually, I don't know how to put it. I just, ed, failing is a good thing because you're learning yeah. stuff about your career. You're learning about stuff about yourself. I failed a lot in life about making videos in relationships in friendships in work i failed a lot and that's the reason i am the one i am today i wouldn't be here without the failings yeah i agree F uh, failure is is the best teacher and if after your failure if you think you're back where you started you're not absolutely and i saw a very interesting uh, question here what's the name of joachim's youtube channel yeah i'm linking it right Maybe now we can, oh, very there. good <laughs> that, that is very good uh yes yeah, so, oh god I've... Yeah, but the, I think that's the that's a good that's a, a, a good point. Um, I mean, I think you tried it out a, a lot more carefully than I did. Uh, I just kind of left everything and uh, blew up my life plenty of times. Um, I think that was maybe important too. So I think, yeah, as you said, there are so many different ways to do this. So none of these things that we say here are, of course, a one size fit, fits all. No, it's always very specific. And one thing I would like to add to this discussion as well is that if you're trying to make your art or whatever it may be, your main occupation, that's why I, how I look at it at least. I don't, need for, I don't need YouTube to be my main thing. It could be mm. YouTube. It could be the podcast, ebook, a bit of um, event gigs. It could be company films I can do. Um, like you don't have to leave everything and then just go for one thing. Like being an entrepreneur yeah. and living off your art can be so many different things. Like me and you, Joachim talked, I think it was a private call between you and I, or was it maybe our last live stream? I can't remember. But we <laughs> These about things that. are blurring now. <laughs> yeah, they're very blurry. And I think what we said there, at least like, yeah, now you're selling paintings and you're living from that. And you're also doing your live streams on Instagram. But maybe in a few years, the live streaming will be your main income because people come to see you paint. So you have no idea what what leg of your entrepreneurship is going to work actually you just have to throw out a lot of things absolutely and then try because i think it's way more safer yeah. to do that because if i would rely on my youtube salary i would look i would be very happy in say december because you to pay a lot in december and then when i look at my salary now in uh, what i got from january i almost want to cry because i don't get it <laughs> uh, yeah, right. it's like my salary from youtube dropped from December to January, it dropped 70%. And not in views. It's almost the same amount of views, but what YouTube are paying, the ads are yeah. worth different things. So if I was relying 100% on my YouTube, 
it's kind of a big deal if I lose 70% of my income in one week. Yeah, basically. I would say so. Yeah. And I mean, that that fits very well to um, to the thing I do too. So yeah, I live off of painting now, but I don't paint just one thing. So if I lived only off of uh, paintings, for instance, then for instance, for Christmas time, lots of people buy paintings. That's wonderful. Mm. And then afterwards it stops. Yeah. Or for instance, with the candle glasses, I've noticed that, yeah, everyone who wanted one has put one now. And then mm. that that stops. Mm. And a lot of it, and then suddenly I have books and then people buy that because they actually want something new. They wanted something different. Uh, so if I only had one thing, I would not be able to live off of it. Uh, the, it's the variety that, that really does it. But how do you look at like reaching a new audience then? Because I think about this with my ebook as well, when I read and mm. listen to a lot of like marketing, um, yeah, entrepreneurship marketing books, basically. And I've at this point reached like a, I've, I've sold a lot of ebooks, but that's not the prob- problem. Like the problem is now <laughs> that you said that now the majority of the people that I wanted to buy it have bought it or are actually mm-hmm. waiting for the end of the pre-order because, you know, I can take that later. It's, it's released on the 31st of March. So they have like a couple of weeks left. So maybe some people are waiting, but at some point you need to reach out outside of your audience to actually reach new people that can buy candles or paintings or whatever. So how do you approach that? Uh, that's actually a very important thing because it's, it sounds like I did a lot of good things with marketing and so on. But of course, I met Lena. For those of you who don't know, I'm Lena Henningsen's boyfriend. That's probably where most of you know me. <laughs> uh, and before I met Lena, I sold things only to family and friends, really. Um, mm, okay. Uh, and then suddenly with Lena's audience, um, it and of course she made the website, she's a web designer and yeah. a lot of things. I mean, uh, without her, it wouldn't have been possible at all. So um, find yourself a good partner might be. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, good but yeah so, the audi- so, so the audience really comes from an enormous YouTube channel. It's very difficult to give any clear advice there. Um, so different audiences, well, that's um, through different ways of uh, showing it, I think. So for instance, um, we have had a video about me on Lena's channel. And through that, a lot of people came. And sometimes we have mentioned it in the video, yeah. uh, sometimes not. Um, and of course, if there are different products, different people are going to want that. So some people won't, yeah. won't be interested in a painting, but then suddenly they see the lantern when I'm standing there and that's going to attract them. Yeah. So I think the variety attracts different people, but of course we already have a big channel and that's difficult to tell people you should have a huge YouTube channel. Yeah, but I also think it's a major thing what we're doing right now, you and I, like exchanging audiences, basically. Your audience gets to know me and say hi. And of course we have a lot of like overlap in our audience because we have the same viewers, I think. Yeah. A lot of it at least. (laughs) But at the same time, it's like, these collaborations and that's basically why i do the podcast as well of course i want to meet new and amazing people but that also allows me to connect with their audience and if i'm lucky say that i'm getting a really big name on this uh, on the podcast and they they share about the podcast in their instagram feed or whatever um and then they discover like oh he has an ebook as well cool or whatever it may be it's just you need to you need to help your products reach more people as well because if you just like Oh, I made I made a thing, um, but then you don't talk about it. Then people are not gonna know about it. That's why you need to uh, like hype things up. You need to talk about them, even though it feels uncomfortable talking about like stuff you have created. I guess. Um, oh yeah, but that's a big part of it. I think that's an interesting. I would like to ask you that actually. You, I mean, you are the master at creating connections. Uh, and I mean, how do you go about that? I mean, you basically connected so many people. I saw Rosina was uh, visiting. Yeah. Yeah, she was here, uh, uh, <laughs> her and her brother. But that was actually most, we have, I've had a lot of connection with Rosina, but it was actually Christina that set it up oh, cool. for them to come here. Um, but yeah, that's a weird thing. It's, it feels like I almost like know you now that we actually have hung out, but we never met you and I. Um, that's true. That's a very weird thing if I, <laughs> if I think about it. But for me, it's like, I get to know these amazing people through my podcast or YouTube videos. And I just... Hmm. How to put this? I come back to the same question. What is the worst thing that could happen if I just reach out to this YouTuber or <laughs> blogger or whatever? 
yeah, they could say no or they could uh, ignore me and that's fine. But at least I tried connecting with them. Oh, I can see Rosina is here as well. Oh, Hi, cool. Rosina. <laughs> well, that's a wonderful attitude. I mean, most of us are just too scared really to do it. I mean, that's 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 a good that's a good thought. Just yeah, why just, why not? I just, just have try. to show you that what I got from Rosina and her brother. I don't know if that's oh. going to show up on screen. I got a very cute gift. It has to just, there we are. Yeah. Uh, oh, a little bit closer. Uh, maybe it's it, there. It, it, there we are. Yes. It, oh, it's Yoda. Yeah. That is very <laughs> cute. <laughs> they know I like, like Star Wars. So that was the best. A very good gift, Rosina. Thank you. He's always here. That next is to very my, sweet. My computer. Even though uh, Christina doesn't allow me to have too much Star Wars stuff around the cabin. But <laughs> a small figure is fine, I think. But yeah, connecting people. I, th I think I've had this like in my... Uh, in the description of my um, the sales page of my ebook, like it's so important to grow. Like you're gonna grow the most with the people if you have a supportive community around you, basically. And mm. you're gonna. Uh, I'm that's so tired. I feel like uh, <laughs> uh, I can't find the words. I'm trying to say that like you become basically a sum of those people that are around you. So if you have five people that are partying a lot, like out every weekend, drinking, uh, eating unhealthy food, yeah, you're probably going to go in that direction too. Are you around five people that train constantly? They love training. You're probably going to go in that direction too. So make sure that you think about what people you are surrounding yourself mm. with. And I think that was the one of my main selling points with the ebook that was actually integrating a community with the ebook so if you're buying yeah. the ebook you're getting access to the community and now we're over 180 people there that are striving against the same thing um which is so helpful because if you can like oh like we do like now sharing mm -hmm. our experiences in the road we took so if you can like share that with people and also um like both share it and also receive it from other people like that's how we're gonna grow so connecting people is, I know, maybe that's my true north, actually, just connecting people and trying to it think. It does of, seem a bit like that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you can, I can see lots of people from the cabin tribe here. And it's, yeah, exactly. It really is something that, uh, that you excel at. Uh, connections yeah, are I, incredibly powerful. It is. And I think we, don't, we shouldn't underestimate it at all. And it could be connections when it comes to, you know, neighbors when you move out here. Um, yeah, because you need you need help, especially when I lived yeah. here alone in the beginning. I was like, okay, if this happens, what should I what should I do then? Uh, or if this thing happened, what should I do then? I need help out here, uh, both physically and mentally. So, yeah, surround yourself with the right people is a major part of doing something that you really want to do. Yeah, um, or, or or get or or move away from <laughs> from the wrong people. Exactly. I was just about to say, like energy thieves, go take them away. But also be I think it's important to focus on that you shouldn't just have yes sayers around you, not only, because I think it's people you need people as well that are critical and can call you on your bullshit. Like, okay, Khaled, that wasn't yes. that good. You need to do better. Uh, or you can maybe do in the this direction or yeah. Whatever. Absolutely. Uh, uh, let's see. Um I know I hate to keep catch up with the chat a bit. Oh yeah, me too. Um, uh, I didn't realize that's who you are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Lena's boyfriend. Yeah, I, I probably <laughs> mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, but I actually thought about it before we started. Like we should introduce ourselves. Yeah, not because maybe yeah, people are going to know you, but they're here. not necessarily. Yeah, well, they all know you. But <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah, that's not sure. Uh, that that see. is true. That is true. Of course. Um, yeah. Well, this is Carla Flodin. Um, on my channel and <laughs> uh, you will you will try video editing also me yeah that's exactly uh i love yeah, the I live stream of both oh yeah creative kunstreisers here are very good so i can see that people who are coming from my usual live streams are coming that's here cool too. crossy uh, of course I... is a regular in both of our channels uh absolutely creative kunstreisers, i think is new on yours <laughs> uh laura is asking are um are you both streaming with an ethernet cable have you tried portable routers? Routers. Uh, I've now I'm on an Ethernet cable with the fiber optics, which is just purely amazing. Everything goes yeah so fast. 
but I used to have a portable router, um, like a yeah portable modem basically, and that was okay. It worked, but I couldn't really successfully live stream on it. And uploading videos from home was not an option, so I took that modem up to the actual mountain mountain where we live, spent four hours uploading. Now it takes me two to three minutes to upload a video from wow. home, and I can do these things. So I'm saving so many hours a month to upload different things because I'm uploading to you know my Patreon page, I'm uploading to uh, Nebula, I'm uploading to YouTube, uh, having meetings. It's uh, so many hours that I can just relax and like, okay, this is going to work. Okay, now the live stream didn't work because of the technical issue. That was not <laughs> will. concerning. The, the li- it was not it's about not the, the internet. No, it's not the internet. How is it on your end with the internet? Yeah, the same. So we have an ethernet cable here. Yeah. Um, which is just uh, wonderful. I mean, that's the, that's the thing we need. We don't need running water. We don't, basically, the only thing we really have to have is a, is, is a fast internet. Yeah. And it's quite amazing that we live so off and we still have this like very high speed internet. And it's a, it's a privilege because... Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it would come one day, but I didn't think it would come this soon. If I had to be honest, because it's so off grid, uh, not off grid technically, but it was so off the, uh, the what do you call it, the highway, so to speak. So, yeah, I thought it would take way longer than it that it actually did. But I'm very happy it's here. Yeah, we can all remember your uh, YouTube stories from up on the mountain trying to upload your videos. Yeah. Uh, but that's the funny part. I never shared about how I did it even before that. Before I did, had the portable router, I actually took my cart either to the local supermarket and that took almost double the time. <laughs> um, but unlucky. And then I had to have like extra car batteries to charge the laptop. And sometimes I went to a, a retirement center. Is that what it's called? Where elderly people are living? Sure, yeah. Uh, and they a had retirement this like, home. Um, retirement home, exactly. And they had this... Uh, basically a library where I could sit and upload, but it oh, took, yeah. I don't know, seven to eight hours. I went there in the morning. If I wanted it up in the evening, so oh, I hit upload and then like, okay, I guess I read a book or two or three. Um, and I remember one, one specific video when I uploaded uh, that is called uh, one of my bigger ones. What, uh, why I moved to Northern Sweden, mm-hmm. uh, something like that. The story of how I left Stockholm and then ended up here. That one was planned for that evening. And then I just took my car, drove to the retirement home. And I didn't realize was what time it was. So it was closed. I was like, shit. Okay, how do I do that? So then I realized, okay, I can still reach the internet from the outside. Uh, so I okay, stood I did. <laughs> near the entrance with my laptop like this for, I don't know how many hours. I just stood oh. there. It was January. Very, very cold. And my laptop barely survived. Um, so when you look at that video, uh, why I moved to Northern Sweden, you can think of me standing outside in minus 20 with a laptop and try, <laughs> trying to upload that video. Oh, that was not the fun thing. But it's a fun story now. So, Well, that's how it is with these, uh, these horrible things that happen to us that are really funny afterwards. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I wouldn't change it for the world either. Absolutely. I, I wanted <laughs> I to have mean. gone through these kind of things. Like, yeah, um, that it was so cold here in the cabin from, from the beginning because I learned so much about myself. It was a big part of me ending up in the place I, I am today, I guess. And the same yeah. thing when it comes to, like, living off your art, which we're speaking about. Like, it pushed me to a level that I, like, okay, I need to make this work. Like, I n- really need to make this work. But how am I going to do that? Thing. Absolutely. As someone asks Joachim, is it possible to order a painting with your own proposed motive as an idea? I'm sorry, no. <laughs> 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 I, I paint from imagination while I paint, so I don't paint anything that anyone um, yeah. tips to do me. You get, do you get a lot of those requests? I get a few. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, I did have an idea at some point. I, I mean, I've gone through so many different things and I thought, okay, no one's buying the things that I'm painting. So I made an Instagram post and asked if anyone wants to, they can send me a photo of their favorite tree and I will paint oh. that. And then suddenly things flooded in and I started to <laughs> uh, paint uh, trees on cups. Um, yeah. I very quickly noticed that that is not what I want to do at all. So yeah. be very careful that you don't go through the wrong path. I yeah. know a landscape painter who paints on porcelain 
Mm. And what she really loves to do is to paint huge landscapes. What she does for a living is to paint people's pets on plates. <laughs> okay. That's what's sold. Yeah. And that's how she, yeah. and all of our customers are only people who would like to have their pets on plates. And she can never paint she, a landscape. Yeah. No one buys no. her landscapes and you can just, and I'm so glad that I didn't start with, I mean, some people ask me, oh yeah, I really love my cabin. Can you paint that? Or can you paint my dog? Yeah. And yeah, I could have done that. I'm so glad that I didn't. <laughs> but that's the, oh, I can see, this is a benefit. As you can see, German oh, right. girl in America, uh, which is named Connie. I know um, since she's a member, she once a month members also get these like highlighted messages they can use in the chat. Ah, um, yes. so it doesn't cost anything extra, it's just a bonus that they get a really highlighted, highlighted message. And it's, it's nice to listen to you both. Hello from a rainy uh, Washington state. Uh, that must yeah, be in the middle of the night. Surely, are we still? And we have someone from Canada too. We no, actually have people from the States. Middle of night. No, aren't they after us in time? Aren't it like lunchtime there? Oh, I thought yeah. we were missing the Americans. No, of course the Americans. No, no, are they're too. you're right. Midday. Yeah, yeah, so they're, they're probably yeah, working right. though. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But maybe they can start joining us at some point. <laughs> yeah. Do you paint butterflies? No, I don't paint anything other than nature. No animals, no humans. But can I come back to the thing you talked about? Yes. Uh, painting uh, uh, cats or pets or whatever on things? Yes. yes Sometimes you also need to do those things because I've made mm. a lot of videos for companies, for instance, which I've mm -hmm. absolutely hated. Um, <laughs> But it has, you know, I can still do filmmaking and I can mm. polish on my art of being a filmmaker and an editor and a producer. It wasn't the end product that I wanted to wanted it to be because I had to do it for a company and they had to have their opinions about it. Um, so it's not the same thing, but it's still video making and it's yeah. still art form. So sometimes you had to actually compromise a bit, at least in my point of view, to like, mm. okay, I can do filmmaking and editing, but right now I can't just make it on YouTube. I can make a few YouTube videos, but I also had to do client work to keep me afloat. And I think yeah, that's okay that does for make a while. sense. Yeah, I think that's those are two. It's very difficult because I you can get lost doing that. Uh, or sometimes I kind of wish. I mean, I'm happy the way it turned out now, but I kind of wish I would have done something like that. Mm. I studied political science, which had nothing to do with what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. But I mean, Lena did the same thing. She worked at uh, um, agencies and so at least she was in, she says now she didn't really learn anything from there, but at least she was in that kind of a world and that, so yeah, I, I can, I can recommend that too. So don't, if you're, if you're working in something you don't really like, but it's adjacent to what you love to do, sure. That can be a huge benefit. Yeah. But again, not to getting, try not to get too comfortable either because I could have yes. easily continue with those um, client videos and earned a lot mm. of money on it but it was not what made me happy um, yeah. so it's like I started with the client work and then YouTube started to overlap a bit but it was not like a day I just decided to quit uh, client work I would still do a client video if I find a really fun project I'm totally open for that yeah. um, but I now I have the very big benefit of that I can choose I can say no when I want to I couldn't do that before I still had to say yes to every single thing that came in that came into my inbox because I was like, "Yeah, I have to pay for food. I have to pay for bills. So I need to make this, even though I don't want to." I actually think that's what most. I mean, I think most artists are actually stuck in a different job because most people do keep. They most designers work for commercials. Uh, yeah, and exactly. uh, so I think uh, so much creative talent goes into crap. Yeah. And that is really, really, yeah. really a shame. People, there are so many people with just the most amazing skills and it's used on a Coke commercial. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that's true. Uh, that is really such a shame. So I could just, I, mean, I, I, I get it. I mean, it's, it's, it pays well and it's a comfort zone and so on. But I really hope, yeah. I really hope that it's going to be easier for all of these amazing people with amazing talent to do what they would like to do with it and not to yeah, spend their time and energy on these awful huge companies that produce crap. <laughs> if you want one tip from me that I, that I learned a lot from <clears throat> was that if you want to go in some direction of you want to create videos for YouTube or start having lectures or like ask the people you look up to, like genuinely send them a message or an email like, hi, um, and not just 
ask something from them because that's going to yeah quite that's not be quite they're, annoying they're um, going to get a lot can, of messages like that probably <laughs> exactly try to offer something that might help them or might might, uh, might publish their work or um mm. share their products or like get into their space and if you've done that for a while maybe you can get a conversation starting because because i really really mm. believe in learning from others that it's gone on the same path as you want to be but you've sure. they've done it before you so why not learn from them uh, and and that could be listening to audiobooks or podcasts or live streams like this one but it's just don't be afraid to ask people like the yeah. worst thing that can happen is that you get a no or no answer at all um but just try to learn from other people because they've already been through it so you don't need to make the same mistakes are they that they do that is true absolutely i kind of wish i'd done a bit more like that i made all the mistakes myself and there are a lot and a lot of mistakes you can just really yeah you don't have to do them again yeah uh, i see rosina has a question i think the question nice. is how much of your art you compromise maybe it's better to do another job instead of uh, instead because oh, art yeah. and creativity can be really fragile absolutely and not mm. the resilient i guess yeah that's very true it's a hard 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 balance yeah um, i think that's i mean i think that then then i come back to where i um the what i talked about before it kind of depends on from where your art comes from mm. My art was incredibly resilient because that was what I did when I broke down. <laughs> so yeah. it's uh, so whenever uh, something went bad in my life, I went and painted. Yeah. So I think that's the reason why that was the only thing I really had in my life that really was was stable. And I think that's the reason why I kept on doing it, even though everything else failed around me. And I think for other people, it could be it's much more fragile than that. Because they can only paint, for instance, if they're in a good state of mind or if they're yeah. at peace or something like that. And then mm -hmm. I can imagine that you should probably not live off of it. If it's um, if it gives you such an amount of joy, but it's really fragile, then maybe you should do something else and then do that in your own in your spare time. Yeah, just because you have an interest that is in the art sphere, it's a need to. You, you don't need to end up making money of it. Like it could still no. be just a fun thing, and that's totally fine. Yeah. And make your co commercial and then make your own wonderful videos at the side time. So I, I'm not trying to disparage uh, having a, using your talent in a job that maybe it doesn't mean too much, but you get your money yeah. and then you can go to the cabin in your weekends and, uh, and, and live it. And yeah, so you can do that. You don't have to live off of your passion. I think what we're trying to say, if you, if you choose that way, then there yeah. are ways of doing it. I see Leah Sasse. Can we please oh. see one of your paintings? <laughs> so yeah, sure. please show us. Can you show Let's us a see, few different things so we can see like ah. your whole? Okay, Ooh, that was sure. a close one. So, oh yeah. So there we have. Uh, is this focusing so at all? Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I see it well. You can see it well. Okay, so there's yeah. a painting, and then we have. Oh no, every <laughs> my glasses are. Uh, <laughs> kind Quite of going warm. out. So that's a candle glass. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah, That's the golden amazing. rim. And then we and have all of this the... is for memory, right? Yes. So it's an imagination and memory. So it's, yeah, uh, exactly. it's not taken from photos. It's uh, so that there's, there's uh, the journals. Like what you're really, really talented is, is creating depth, I think. You're so I talented. I appreciate that. Like, I really, I always so love painting where you just kind of fall into. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So these are the journals, which I really like because I really love the fact that you can kind of delve into the book and then you can yeah you can uh, create your own little worlds there yeah yeah i think that and then i have <laughs> see if you get me going here yeah? this won't stop yeah, but take the last one go for it <laughs> and there we have a, a river i think yeah, see that's there? Amazing. yeah, yeah, yeah i see it <laughs> yeah so these are the things that i i, I make and yeah so someone uh, did mention there that they uh, created a painting from a photo from Yona Yintan, I think, and then they tried to paint afterwards and it didn't turn out well. And I, I've noticed that myself. It's really it's much easier to paint from a photo. <laughs> um, but it's so much more fun for me, at least, to paint just from imagination. And um, if you stick to it, uh, eventually it'll get easier. <laughs> Have you made something that you were too proud of to actually sell? 
uh, there were things that I uh, made earlier where I painted for like 50, 60, 70 hours. Uh, wow. And uh, I really, really didn't want to sell that. But uh, now it's more of <laughs> uh, because it was really worth it if I sold something like that for like a thousand pounds. I mean, the hourly wages yeah. would be laughable. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but now, no, it's just, it's so nice that people have it uh, and that it's, there's, a, there's a place for it in people's homes. I think that is just so incredible. And knowing that people yeah. write in these journals, um, their thoughts, and uh, it's just, it's a gift. I mean, it, yeah. yeah. So no, <laughs> not anymore. And you can also switch out the pages, right? So you can yes, refill you them? Yes, you can. Yeah. Absolutely. So these can, you can inherit them. You can, uh, you can use them for a hundred years, basically. Yeah. I would be so afraid exactly. of like getting something that nice and actually using it. You know what I mean? It's almost like getting a new <laughs> camera. Like I don't want to, like, I almost don't want to use it because it's too fancy. People have told me that they have bought a cup and then just put it in a cupboard and they don't. Touch oh, it. really? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I get that. But uh, of course, I mean, a part of the business model is that it gets a bit damaged and you have to buy a new one. Yeah, that's true. And I think like, so... <laughs> I have this theory of like, you should use the stuff you have in your house and in your life. There's no point of just pe keeping stuff on the shelf or yes. to like, they should be worn out. Like I want, I, of course I take really good care of my camera and I get pissed off if someone drops it on the ground, but I just mean like, what, how do you put it? I, I think this is saying called like, never trust the climber with the shiny equipment. Like you should. Oh yeah, like, I, <laughs> I I get that. I would never I would never trust that guy. I want the guy that's worn out clothes, worn out like uh, harnesses, and that's Absolutely. the guy I'm gonna trust. Um, I can see a lot of my. It's so cute when um, besides German girl and American, everyone that is here, Dominique. Yeah, you can and, see the uh, cabin. Track Aaron here. is here. Yeah, Aaron is here as well. He is also a, and, uh, not only beautiful a YouTube stuff, member. He's a you. patron as well. Just wanted to thank the people that said the beautiful work. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's yeah. No, it's it's uh, wonderful that it's appreciated, and this is going to be the new thing. Uh, I'm painting on huge, huge mm. lanterns now. That's a big one, yeah. So the little door, and so yeah. these are going to be on little worlds with a huge candle in the middle, for instance. So yeah, lots Ooh, of different the projects. Other, the other lanterns have been like more uh, a bit smaller, right? Yeah, they were much much smaller. Mm. Uh, so these are sturdier and bigger. Um, so yeah. Uh, Back to the, the topic of living off your own. Branch out. <laughs> find some. <laughs> yeah. Branch out. I think, that's, lots of different things. I think that's also important to not, that's a trick of not getting tired of it, actually. Because even though yes, I really en enjoy <laughs> filmmaking, I need a break sometimes and do something else. That's why the ebook has been so fun because it's like a totally different thing. Uh, yeah. I get to create, but it's in, a, it's in writing and that's a totally different experience. So, yeah, it's nice to expand. Yeah. expand your horizons and just doing different things and I, I i couldn't just paint paintings or just paint cups it wouldn't work so yeah and krasi exactly. says i love drinking coffee yeah. in joachim's cup yeah <laughs> not totally not afraid to use it if it breaks then it breaks then i'm going to enjoy it while i have it at least that's wonderful krasi. that's that's how it should be yeah it really should be like that because of course i have fancy things and i have clothing that i like more than the others but it, it should be used otherwise there's no point of Habit, yeah I feel like. and i mean you can always buy a painting and you can just keep that on the wall so i have something you can absolutely <laughs> i can see hang on i just need to check this okay Painted now, candles perfect. thank you hmm? i saw that you just passed 500 subscribers on your youtube page now so now oh I'm... wonderful oh people are halfway through <laughs> that is <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> I am going to uh, move my live streams uh, when I paint to, to YouTube. So I, I appreciate everyone. And if I get to a thousand, I can finally expand it a bit more. So um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to spam the link <laughs> again. So you people that are here can actually go there and subscribe. So see, make connections, make friends like Colin and uh, you can come Everything on their podcasts and live yeah. stream. And, uh, and I actually, that's actually a plan that I have. And if I get my own store at some point, I would love to have... Um, places where other artists can sell their things too oh that's cool like a so gallery can have, place of that yeah so you can say okay for instance in my shop you have like uh, this much space and you can just have whatever you want there and people can buy that that's cool uh, that's but something it's, i would it's... have loved when i was uh, up and coming 
is it basically like a digital gallery or no i mean this would be an actual in the actual store i would like mm, to have an actual physical one. live okay. physical physical store yeah uh, and that's what i would love i mean if you make something one of the most difficult things is where to sell it yeah and uh, yeah so something like that would be oh oh now you died <laughs> are you back there i am fine. i yeah. i have 20 percent on my phone <laughs> okay that's charged, fine but 20 percent is, is plenty yeah, that's plenty no so i would have loved to have that myself and uh, yeah so something like that would be brilliant yeah i can see a good question from susanna do you guys get exhausted after making <laughs> videos or i guess paintings i feel so empty afterwards and i'm not sure what mm. i'm doing wrong it's nothing wrong at all we no, I think most creators feel this way. When I've done a video or a podcast, or basically after this live stream, I'm gonna like, oh, like it's like an outlet, um, yeah. And you need to almost break down after that. And the funny thing for me, <laughs> and also Christina has told me several times that she, um, when we, um, now I can see that people are subscribing to your Thank channel. You. So perfect. <laughs> uh, it's almost this funny timeline that if you have your video like this. Uh, this is the whole like starting and this is publishing for instance like when you're here like getting closer to publishing you're already like mentally starting to work on the oh, next yeah. video um <laughs> do you have the same thing with paintings that you start to plan or think about the next one before it's even the one you're on is done oh yeah i mean i paint on like 50 things at once uh so absolutely uh you just get to, oh this would be wonderful and then i i, I jump from from thing to thing uh, so absolutely yeah. and i think i think the with the exhausted after making videos i think especially for instance i mean not sure if you mean um, i mean if you have a for instance a big painting or if you're making a video and you've been doing so much on it you, you put so much of yourself into it and there's so many emotions and often you feel after this i'm going to be just happy and but no if you if you use so many emotions yeah then first everything just kind of has to it feels almost a bit you kind of feel em you feel empty of course because the project mm -hmm. is gone um it's a very natural feeling and it's often uh completely the opposite of what you think it might be but then the joy will come once you see it and uh, so yeah don't yeah. be scared about that and i think one thing that a lot of <laughs> a lot of people are subscribing. <laughs> thank you, you guys just, <laughs> i just <laughs> updated that. your page you went from when i did the uh, last update you had <laughs> 498 something now it's 513 so okay well, wonderful i have there. to make some better content now <laughs> <laughs> uh what was i saying um exhausted after working video videos yeah uh was well, something around that hmm what could that have been mm -hmm. but yeah it, oh yeah doubting yourself that was gonna was gonna mm. say it's so oh common thank for, you like, sorry <laughs> just uh <laughs> lives on your channel start? or will you keep them on instagram still good question uh, they will be on youtube uh yeah and uh thank you crazy for uh, for uh, thank you so much contribution. and i'm sorry that i um cut you off color <laughs> it's on. perfectly fine kirasi is totally allowed to inter interrupt <laughs> uh no i just talked about like doubting yourself you, um, susanna said like what am i doing wrong like mm. you're not doing anything wrong the only thing you're actually doing wrong is not talking to other creators I think is because you need to realize that all these problems that we have are shared by other people as well. Uh, yeah, immensely. Helps. Same, same thing. Like every single month, um, I lose a few of my patrons because mm. people are maybe not have money enough or are choosing to support something else or, and I can't take that personally, but in the beginning I was super doubting oh. myself. Like, Okay, two people left. Uh, am I the <laughs> oh, yeah. most worthless person on the planet? Should I just quit all of this? Like two people left. But if I would continue starting like that, it's like it would not be healthy. Like you need to not take it um, personally. But again, talk to people around you that are in similar situations or ask people you look up to, uh, because doubting yourself is a big part of it. I'm mm. the video. I'm video. I'm working on right now that is coming out on Sunday is. It's been three days now, but just doubting. I was like, I can't put oh. it together. Like I have this big puzzle basically of images and videos and I've deleted half of it because I was like, mm, no, it's not, the, it's not exactly what I want. Uh, and I need to go back on it, but it feels like I have this enormous puzzle, but I don't know what the end picture should be like. So now I'm just putting in puzzle pieces without actually knowing the results. 
Um, so I just have to try. I recorded yeah. for one hour today and I got so many, um, yeah, so many good inputs, but I, yeah, you just got to keep trying and doing something wrong. Yeah. Um, all of us are doing something wrong. That's kind of part of being a creative person. So, uh, Absolutely. James Lucas says, have a good evening. You are keeping I'm going to bed shortly. Have a good Thank evening. Thank you for joining us, James. And yeah, I saw your message on uh, on Discord. I will answer you as soon as I'm uh, done <laughs> with the, the live stream. Um, and yeah, doubt, doubt is just incredibly natural. I've gone through sometimes I just thought, what the hell am I doing? I'm painting. I'm doing something a five-year-old is doing and think that people are going to pay me for that and how stupid and I should be doing a normal job and yeah, these things are very, very natural part of it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, I had the same thing when I was about to launch my ebook. I was like, what if mm. no one buys this? Oh, yeah. Why, like, oh, no I one... remember that when the shop was opening and I just thought, yeah, oh, I no, totally get oh, that. Shit, shit, shit. Just nothing. Yeah. Just... yeah. <laughs> that's panic mode. Um, it's oh, not yeah. a fun feeling uh, no. because you have these expectations and then like, <laughs> How much expectations you to have? Is it what is a good volume? Is was it a good price? Was it are people gonna like? You know, it's so many questions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's impossible to take in almost. But that's why it's so important to talk to other creators. Like I talk to you or to Christina yeah. or my family. It's just so important to share your thoughts that you have in your head. So, oh, sorry, it's fine. I'm back. I just had to check if I had enough electricity, but I have plenty. Oh yeah. That's good. Um, uh, this is not to, uh, and people may grow uninterested and uh, yeah. Yeah, not, not take it personally. Yeah, just, yeah, there are so, I mean, for instance, now, I mean, your channel is so big that there's so many different opinions and people and. Yeah. Yeah. And that is okay too. Like, like I said earlier in the live stream that when I do more of these live stream, um, I last live stream, I lost 300 subscribers, I think. Because, but that, again, that's fine because that's yes. not, if it's 300 people leaving, that's totally fine because I'm going to do more live streams. And if they don't want to be subscribed to this channel, they shouldn't be here. Uh, this yeah, is they're not I'm the right people the for the channel. No. Lena had that with her uh, camping video. She had a video that got really mm. big with the camper van. But of course, a lot oh. of the audience loved camper vans. Uh, yeah. They were not, that, that's what they wanted to see. Uh, <laughs> and that's not what Lena's okay. channel is about. No, and so we saw in the the statistics suddenly. I mean, ninety percent of her that was before her first big video, and like oh, okay. ninety percent of the people were like forty five year old men. Oh, that was <laughs> just completely fun. the uh, okay. the wrong target audience. So yeah, yeah. It, it just just know if you that's a, that's that's actually a good point uh, that sometimes people unfollow you, and that might very well be a good thing. Um, exactly. That's totally fine. And you again, <laughs> I took it personally in the beginning because mm. I was actually totally relying on my Patreon. That was my only income for my creative work oh, for yeah. a long, oh, long time. So when people unsubscribed, I was like, oh, boof, okay, shit, what do I do now? Because it's like got... a demotion then. Exactly. Because I was like, okay, if this continues, I actually have to take another job. Uh, oh, but God, luckily, yeah. it turned in the right direction. So, okay. Christine is sneaking up in the background. No, oh, that's okay. Yeah, you can Come on. Uh, let's, almost uh, see let's, her. Can yeah. we see her? No, no. <laughs> yeah, Christine is. Yeah. You want to come closer? You can hear me? Yeah. I, I, if you can speak out. Yes, we bit, can but... hear you. Like you were just talking about insecurity. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, I was sitting upstairs, like so insecure because I've been sharing three stories about my woman circle and lost 10 followers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> So I can recognize it. Yeah. Yeah. I have the same thing now when I'm promoting my ebook oh, so yeah. much. Like I've spammed stories and uh, posts. I feel like I spammed it at least. Uh, newsletters. And I can saw that I was on 22 or 24,000 point seven before I started posting. And now oh, I'm point yeah. six, <laughs> which means that at least 100 people that has left in one week or something. Again, totally fine. Because if they don't want to be there, then that's not the right audience so yeah and i've been very very impressed by how, how uh, lena actually does that uh, she yeah is it ridiculously disciplined um with her she just she posts 
when she really feels like posting and uh, it goes much I, I, and I've often felt I mean if you just posted about the shop now a lot of people would come and she yeah. could so easily generate but no 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 it's not the right time and I mean that's a way of doing it too it's it's very different Absolutely. than I think both of us work yeah because I, I I think oh this I want to post this people should see it and then I click send <laughs> and then I post more and then I do links and so on but yeah. she builds it up very slowly but then it gets an incredibly strong foundation uh so that amount of patience uh i've learned a lot from that uh we waited a year to launch the shop until everything was right um yeah that's a lot of preparation so there are, there are different ways of doing it and um lots of different ways can so you can spam things out and you'll get people to come or you can be r- ridiculously slow and then everyone is right uh, yeah so there are lots of different ways of doing this yeah the same thing when i think about my youtube videos like if i create more high high cut videos like a higher tempo i'm gonna attract mm-hmm. people that like these kind of fast cuts videos mm-hmm. if i drag them out and have long cut scenes with like uh, drone footage and a slow video i'm gonna attract that kind of audience um but if i mix it too much people get confused and have no idea what this to is expect. true um, yeah, so some consistency kind of might be the might be the point there. I think yeah. the beard uh, just make color looks older. Oh, because someone <laughs> chose, someone said I was your son. I think at some point here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny. We said I just want to say uh, uh, Susanna says hi, Connor says hi, and Mary Ann says hi to Christina. Hi. Um, we have still yeah, not I, seen Christine, though. I mean, is that no? She's sitting very very close to the camera, but not on camera. <laughs> it's go. comforting Nala that it's very very um, cozy on in right at this moment um also are say, you actually older than me how old are you i'm 33 oh you are older than me yeah and how old are you i'm 31 okay then i then i could be your dad basically then it's Just probably the beard that i should yeah. i should probably grow a beard too then yeah i did this uh, thing when uh, in my previous live stream when i launched the ebook i said if we reach 100 ebooks sold in the live stream i will dive into the snow during the live stream. oh yes uh, and i said to christine like what should be the next thing like uh because i need a new goal for say when we reach say 200 ebooks or something i was like oh i can i can do like to shave off the entire beard on the stream to make like if we reach that point she was like no you can't do that um so i'm not allowed to do it because we're meeting her family in a, in a <laughs> month or two so she was like i can't yet you like it's not half naked, but you know, like I would look a bit naked if I took the beard off. So yeah, and the problem is that you look like in the before videos that you have of you, uh, yeah, because exactly. you're the the kind of the the image now is is this, yeah, and then suddenly exactly. you look like the guy that we have the picture of jogging in the mountains. Um, yeah, it'll <laughs> it it will confuse us all very much. Yeah, I think so too. But it would still be a fun goal, though I have to say, because it's such a not a permanent thing, but it's a very big change. Um, but true. I had to think. I of, mean, shave think the of head, a new goal. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, that could be. That's a way <laughs> bigger thing. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but if anyone has any fun ideas um, for future goals on live stream, that would be mm. highly appreciated. It's also f- always fun to take in. Yeah, you know, we did talk about you know. getting a tattoo of one of my trees or something. On, yeah, exactly. Like know. here. Yeah. Yeah. If I sell yeah. one or two ebooks, maybe that could be. I'm not. Fair. I'm not against that. I mean, I can buy a tattoo pen and see yeah. what, what I can do. <laughs> yeah, that sounds very fun. Uh, I can you could from... sing a song, color. I, that's not a bad idea. On your Ooh. roof again, like the yeah. Oh my god, that will be terrifying. But then I have to. Really I think practice. it should be a song that people that that kind of your cabin tribe decide or something. It should not be something that you you're allowed to des- decide yourself. Oh, that's even worse. Oh yeah. We love and it, it should be on, on your roof with the guitar. I think that's... Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I, I think that's, oh, that's actually... A good, I think, I that's think a good that's challenge. The... Hmm. But then I, I, bet, I bet I need to still practice the song before if we reach the goal. No. Oh, I think that's a good thing too. You're not allowed yeah. to practice the song. <laughs> <laughs> You're making this very hard, I have to say. Uh, I just saw a question that will drop into a bit quickly from relaxing mm. sounds. Uh, do you mind sharing briefly, obviously, how you plan a video? Do you have, for example, a storyboard f- beforehand or do you just film and then put the pieces together? Uh, this is something where me and Christina are very different. And we realized that quite recently. Uh, Christina is more the person of grab the camera and 
uh, get a feeling of what you want to film and more in the moment and very more uh, spontaneous. I am the complete opposite. I have the title from the very beginning. I have the family, thumbnail in mind. I have a shot list for how to shoot it, when to shoot it. Uh, I'm not exactly following it to 100%, but I have a very strict plan um, on how it's going to look and how it's going to feel. Um, I usually download a few uh, a few songs, like this is the mood of the video, mm. um, stuff like that. Do you so, write yeah, down I, a shot list? Do you have like lists of things you... I have a special... Um, what do you call it? App called Notion. Uh, I'm right. actually thinking of doing a whole video on just that, actually, not on YouTube, but like a yeah, an extra thing maybe one day. Yeah, or your um, second channel. Yeah, that could be one thing exactly. Um, so I I plan a lot in there. Like I can just I don't think you can see it on here, but just to understand the amount of time that goes into just um, scripting. Yeah, like. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to spoil the titles. I don't want to do that. Hang on. What about writing a song uh, for Christine and playing it? I mean, that's not bad. Uh, what about writing a song? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. I know if you can see the. Oh yeah. Uh, the amount of text, but like this it is just. It just has for to. Like there a... we are. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. This is just my script for. Oh. Is that what you're gonna say, or what is what? What are we looking at here? Yeah. This is. Um, first section is just uh, i have divided into like um, it's called uh, the first section is basically called uh, how do you put it um first i put in like uh, title ideas and then thumbnail ideas um notes and ideas and then i go into uh, the layout of the video which basically the first thing i wrote right up is the hook and that's 10 to 15 seconds of hooking in the audience to what the video is about, basically. Um, and then I do an intro, which is basically me introducing myself or what the video is going to be more, but in depth, uh, introduce the layout. And then there's like the content, what the video is actually about. Uh, and then an outro. So that's the major, um, major, what do you call it? The outlining. And then I have a whole yeah. list of check marks. Like, have I done this? Have I... Uh, uploaded it to this bonus site? Have I um, replied to all the comments? Have I, yeah, there's a tick for everything. So I know that okay. I, if I've done the tick list, I'm done with the video and that's totally fine. Because okay, when so you are, you are organized. I would like to call myself organized. That but sounds I'm very, very organized. Yeah, I like to have it under control, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. And I have, I like to have everything in one place because I also use like Google Keep and it's just, filled with 400 notes. Uh, now when I'm using, uh, can you hear me? Or did they die? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you fine. Can you hear okay. me? I can hear you. Uh, it's yeah, just good. that my <laughs> headphones died. Okay, yeah, that's we've been talking for a while. So that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have this no, an, an app called Notion. So I, I basically have one major folder for the ebook, one major folder for my newsletter, one major folder for my YouTube videos. And then I throw into yeah. like different categories, like ideas. And then from ideas, it goes to writing process. And then when it's, when I'm done with the writing process, I move it over to ready to film. And then I film it. And then I move it over to feedback, send it to some people for feedback. And then I move it from feedback to published. Um, that's my process in a very Are short, short manner. Um, let's see. Uh, writing a song, writing a song. Um, okay, what about writing? <laughs> yeah, Christina has always re requested this actually. That uh, they say that one of the goals should be like that I'm writing a song for you and playing it live. No pressure at all. <laughs> mm. I, I, I'm guessing that's the parody thing. I, not the parody, but I just had my um, I had my camera rolling, you know, when I was renovating the roof alone. Maybe that's the point when I was singing extremely falsely. I just had my headphones on and just playing, playing yeah, air drums and I, I, guitar. I, I saw too. Yeah, Someone asks just... here, uh, I recently started painting digitally. Um, what is some good advice? I mean, I can't really talk to that. I've never painted digitally. Have you never tried uh, I have never tried that. Uh, okay. So I, I, I mean, if you have some other 
clear questions I might be able to answer, but I've never I've never done anything like that. So I have no idea. Hmm. Uh, I have a lot to learn to learn to do camera settings. Oh yeah, I have to start uh, using Lena's cameras and uh, helping her with the filming. And Jesus, it's really a world of its own. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a lot to take in. Um, but um, I hope that someday. Uh, landscape of wild photography yeah to this is the very common thing as well like this what like what you just said camera settings like yeah just start with something in the beginning i just have everything on auto like iso mm. on auto the aperture the, uh, everything was just on auto and then just start filming don't think too much about the setting um of course it should look completely horrible but if you have everything on auto it can't go that wrong uh, yeah. you can't adjust that much but then you at least can just start filming that's the most important part um, i think i could say that for people who want to paint uh too. just start painting uh yeah. don't think too much about what what you want to create or where you want to go or something just get some colors and slap it down and you'll learn while you do that so i think it's uh yeah with both of these 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 things it's just um start and you'll learn so much on the way yeah um, exactly and then you can do tutorials and you can kind of uh, look at youtube videos and uh, but you often you won't know what you want to learn until you've kind of gone into it that's true and what uh, this is this is a bit of a like a dilemma as well like mia says kelly you could do a video about what you just said how to make a video but the problem there is that that's not why my I love to talk about these things. I love to talk about entrepreneurship, finance, and making videos and a lot of things, but that doesn't really belong um, on my main channel. So that yeah. needs to be somewhere else. Either it's on Patreon or a second channel or um, something like that. Because yeah, a few of you would really love that idea. And I love would love to make a video like that, but it doesn't really belong on my simple living mm -hmm. main page. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a dilemma. I would love to share something like that, but there's not enough people on the channel that would actually appreciate it because that's not what they sign up for. Yeah, I think you need, definitely, you need, and you, you need a second channel. Yeah, I do. That's uh, absolutely. And uh, Christine says, it would not say no to a son. I think this is the sign. Uh, how many <laughs> books, uh, Colin, uh, was it you're going to? 2,000, I think. 2,000. <laughs> how many have you, how many are pre-ordered now? Uh, at this point, we're at 182 pre-orders. So I think 300 pre-orders then. And Three, we will get the song. Only 100 is that away. You can... 300 is too cheap, if I had to be honest. Yeah. Um, Four? I can, at 500, I can write 500 and perform books. a song. Yeah. Okay, very good. That's a deal. For Christine. On yeah, the roof. For Christine. Yeah, <laughs> on the roof. Then very I have to figure good. out how to live stream a song on the roof. But yeah exactly that could be interesting okay we're well, really looking forward to it. the the only problem right now is that we can't even get up on the roof because the the snow layer is like <laughs> like this uh, and half of it is ice i'm just waiting for one day it's gonna mm. like loosen and then <laughs> oh, we've had that off. here with the barn it's we had almost yeah. a half a meter or a meter of snow and it was all on top of the barn where we go to the toilet underneath it's yeah really, really scary uh Okay, but uh, well, you'll figure something out. You can, you can, you can climb a tree or something. I mean, I will make uh, it there, work are, there are options. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just think it should be take a few last questions before we. Yeah, um, I have no idea what the time is. Fiddler, it's uh, ten thirty in the evening, so I we've been live. We have for... been talking. Yeah, and we have been talking to each other since uh, five. <laughs> five o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> so we've basically been talking for six hours now. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I had a lot of plans for today, but like working and filming some more and <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, well. and now I will buy books as NSS. See, very good. It's already working. Yeah. <laughs> Almost should put up as a public goal as well. So people will know about it. Absolutely. Oh, you should have that. You should have a meter. Yeah. That could actually be kind of fun. Uh, I would yeah. love to have that in. Um, it doesn't work exactly with live streams, but I would love to have like a, a bar on top of when I yeah, do live, exactly. so it's like do, 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 fills up, but it doesn't work for some reason. Um, <laughs> Five hundred is not that far away. Better start writing. <laughs> Thank you for adding the pressure. Um, 
<laughs> oh, thank yeah. you, Connie. That's really sweet. I've got another question for you. What was the most yeah. challenging thing you encountered moving to such rural areas? Rural, oh, that is absolutely the word. I mean, the, yeah. what was the most challenging part for you? Mm, most challenging, I think maybe having my family and friends really close as I used to have. I couldn't just drop by for a dinner or hang out. Mm. Um, I think that was the most, it was of course hard with like the, uh, not having heat and not being able to, I didn't have a car in the beginning. So I walked, walked to the supermarket. I was six hours there. And then I don't know, oh, <laughs> maybe four hours there and four hours home or something. It took forever, but the family thing was still the toughest thing. And still is, I think mm. I would like to have them closer, but that's a compromise I have to make because I love to live up here. Uh, mm. Christina has moved even further away. She's 14 hours away from her family. So yeah, even more of a commitment. What about I you? would love to yeah, I would love to say family, but I have to say uh, showers are <laughs> <laughs> and you're just getting started with this non-shower thing. Yeah, yeah, and maybe ending at some time. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean I've lived I've lived like that before, uh, and even more uh, simply. Um but I think actually that is a kind of a challenge. Does never feeling completely clean? Totally agree. And I know I Christina admit, would agree with you as well. <laughs> especially in the winter i mean in the summer you can just go to the creek and you can swim and you can uh, you can exactly. wash it it's much much easier but in the winter sometimes you just and it is tricky yeah absolutely. now it's like plus so, degrees here which is kind of nice it's not now but during the day it's sunny and it's like plus five i think today um so now is no problem at all standing outside but like two weeks ago it was minus 20 something that's quite cold. It's like one thing when I'm standing out showering because then it's getting <laughs> warm water on top of me. But as soon as the waters run out, yeah. I'm naked and I'm very cold and I want to get in very quickly. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, okay, let's see. I just Let's take one last question then from Aaron. Yeah. I'm working on being more silent. What is mm. the longest either of you have been completely silent? Oh, Ooh completely silent well that's difficult um yeah i mean that kind of depends on what you mean i mean i often whistle <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but i mean sure there's been days and days and so i was aware where there were no one around so i didn't meet anyone for like a few weeks um mm. so it's uh i mean completely silent probably only hours huh? when you think about it yeah same here especially since you know i had the dog even though i lived here alone so i talked mm. a lot with her and like uh, yeah should we go for a walk okay let's go for a walk let's have let's do dinner as uh, so i talked with her a lot as well even yeah. though i was here alone and i talked a lot on the phone and yeah but completely alone that was a long oh completely silent that was a long time ago mm. i think um but yeah i think it's a good That's thing the... though trying it out it is because absolutely not having distractions and just listening to your thoughts that could be super scary but it's so um, it's very much a learning curve as well yeah okay let's uh, should we uh, let everyone get a chance to say good night and uh, yeah that sounds like good idea. and i need to figure out to have the live stream yeah and i also need to understand how we actually quit the live stream because i've never done it through <laughs> zoom either so that's going to be a new thing uh, but it says here stop live streaming but we should say hi and hi and goodbye to everyone yes uh, so we have some there's always so, a bit of yeah, delay so, on, the, on yeah, the chat thank so. you everyone who's joined us uh, even at this um, well <laughs> long delayed live stream um, yeah but it worked first live stream somehow at least it did yeah and we have had 100 people and up to 140 people yeah, I saw that. It was amazing. So next time we're going to try to, if we can, make it work a bit more smoothly on time and yeah, yeah, a bit more interactive and stuff. That will be fun. Like absolutely. And maybe during the weekend? Yeah, weekend, absolutely. That was the plan. Um, and yeah. then, uh, uh, yeah, we decided to do it a bit later. Yeah. Good night. Okay. Sandra. Bye. Good night. Okay. Good night, Bianca. Good night, Dominica. Good night, everyone. Do you good want night. to say good night, sweetie? Good night. <laughs> <laughs> good okay. night. Okay.